Hello and welcome back to Bitfar. This is episode 10 of our Nintendo Dual vs. System Red Tent Restorations. In our last video, we broke down these Sharp XM1801 monitors, uh, tore it all down into various pieces, and then gave the whole thing a big old bath. So if you want to see how to tear one of these things down, or at least how I learned how to tear one of these things down, that's the video to watch. Uh, I found out as I've, this is my third one actually that I've torn apart now and they, they fly apart now. I've got definitely a process figured out, which has been, yeah, it's been very nice. Anyway, so in this video, we are going to work on the monitor chassis here. Chassis here. We're going to recap it and we're going to install a new flyback. So that's what we're looking for here in this video. Talking a little bit about the tools that we've got to work with here. So uh, what I've got laid out here is just uh, my, my Weller, uh, my, it's a WES51. That's sort of my main working iron. And then I've got this guy. This is a Heiko 808 solder sucking vacuum tool. This thing is freaking awesome. So part of the process obviously is going to be removing components from these boards, but uh, which is, you know, it's going to involve desoldering. So this is a fantastic tool. Uh, I picked it up not too long ago uh, on a group buy from, I think it was Pinside. And, you know, I don't remember exactly what the price was, but, you know, the group buy knocked a couple bucks off of that and made it, you know, that much more affordable. And the company that was doing it, their customer service was absolutely fantastic. They shipped this stuff to me super fast. And actually, with along with the order, I got a couple different tips for it because it has, you know, it, the tip is hollow, so it can suck the solder in, of course. And it's, it's activated by this uh, little button there. So, yeah, so the group buy, uh, they were offering these things at a discount and then everything else off of your order at a discount too. So I picked up the, the stand for it because it's got a nice cradle for it with a, a notch in it that keeps the keeps the gun uh, nice and steady there. And I think I picked up, like I said, a couple of extra tips, a couple of different sizes, and an extra kit with like the filters and, and some of the other uh, consumable parts of it. So we'll show you how to use that, but I thought I'd also, while mentioning it, uh, show you some of the other common tools for removing solder. So this is one, this is a Paladin Tools uh, 17. 0.00, uh, maybe that's the tip size, not sure. Anyway, so the way this works is, is that you, you know, when you, when you heat up the solder to remove it, before you do that, you depress this plunger, and then as you uh, heat up the solder and it goes molten, you remove the iron and then hit that button, which then, you know, piston rides up in here and that creates a little vacuum at the tip and the solder gets pulled up into a chamber inside the body here. This thing uh, works just fine. Um, you've used it quite a bit, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, there's nothing wrong with this tool. It works just fine, but I like the Heiko 808 better. So that's a solder sucker. And then there's this guy, which is a desoldering iron, uh, which I've, I've used uh, a fair bit as well. So the way this one works is, is uh, you don't have to use the, the heat from this one. It's, it's, you know, plug it in. So the tip gets hot and you depress the sort of turkey baster back end here and go in and then heat it up and then when the solder goes molten you release the the turkey baster and then that pulls the solder up into a chamber up here and then you can kind of use this turkey baster to eject it so this thing works uh, pretty well as well it's nice having a kind of an all-in-one tool so you're not having to do the the, the, the two-handed thing with the iron you know and this guy and kind of working back and forth Again, all these things work just fine. There's nothing wrong with them, and they're inexpensive generally. So this thing I think was like ten dollars maybe, and this one, the the plug-in one, was maybe twenty twenty-five dollars, maybe even less. I, I don't even remember, but like relatively inexpensive. The Heiko 808. That's there. There you're talking more money. I want to. My memory is failing me on it, but I want to say it was around hundred and fifty. So yeah, it's definitely a big step up in cost, but. As you'll see when we start actually working on the board, it is fast 
and efficient and uh, works works fantastic. And I knew that I was going to be rebuilding. You know, I've got seven of these monitors to to build all at once. And if you're doing kind of a piecemeal, like one monitor at a time, you know, sure, working you know with the other other tools, again, just fine. But this thing just makes this. I don't want to say a joy, but practically a joy. No, no, it really is. It's it's a joy. It's a joy to work with. It's 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 a fantastic fantastic tool. So if you find yourself having to do a lot of this work, getting something like the Heiko 808 or even the 808, if Pinside, you know, if there still is a group I over there, maybe definitely go check that out if you're interested. Um, and yeah, so uh, let's see. The on top of that. Um, We'll need a cap kit, which I have over here. This is a cap kit for the XM1801 and also the 2001, which I believe is just the 20 inch version of the same monitor. So I believe the chassis is uh, identical or nearly identical. Uh, at least the caps are obviously identical for what uh, Bob Roberts provided in the kit. And yes, indeed, this came from the real Bob Roberts or the real Bob Roberts.net. And. What you get with a kit is basically, aside from the caps, um, they give you a worksheet, which is brilliant. So the worksheet, we'll get into that in just a second, just so I can dump these guys out. So that's all the caps right there. And Bob also includes this, which is really nice. So it's a little uh, sticker that you can attach to the chassis once you're done. It just says, this chassis was recapped by, and you put your name there, and the date. So that's, that's awful handy to know when the, the monitor was last serviced, and well, I guess sometimes it's nice to know who serviced it as well. So the worksheet. All the tool you need with the worksheet is a, a highlighter. So what I do to start with is on the left-hand side here, it has all of the capacitors, the electrolytic capacitors that come in this kit and uh, their values. And then on the right column here, it has the positions on the board. So for example, this first one here is a one microfarad 50 volt capacitor, and we have three positions. So the first thing I do when I get the worksheet and get everything kind of all sorted out here and ready to work, is I'll go through and count the, the parts and make sure I have all the parts that correspond to the positions on the sheet. And then what I what I do is I'll go find, in this example, three one microfarad 50 volt capacitors in this thing, set them aside, and then mark off on the left column that I found all three of those. That way you go through the whole list, get all that done first, make sure you've got everything before you start working. And that way you don't find yourself halfway down the list or in, you know at the end of the list and you're missing parts that, uh, that you need to finish the job. So, that's step one. We'll go through and mark that off. I'm not going to include you guys in that part of the video, uh, <laughs> counting capacitors and reading them. Not terribly exciting. Maybe uh, one one quick thing to mention. So the the actual language that's written down here is it, it it's one UF fifty V. So UF is well the U is actually not a U. Uh, the U is a micro. It's a character for micro, and F is for farad. So it's a one microfarad. And then the last number, the 50, is the, just the 50 volts. So uh, the microfarad's just a, a unit of measurement for how capacitors are, are rated. So um, it's uh, bigger capacitors, you get into picofarads, that's, and all the rest of that stuff. Really, when it comes to these monitor chassis, microfarads is really all you're generally going to have to worry about. And again, generally all you're going to worry about is uh, these electrolytics. Now, there are other kinds of capacitors on here. But generally, the kits, uh, unless the monitor has known to have issues with uh, those kinds of, of capacitors, and then Bob includes them in the kit, or other people who, there are other people who sell cap kits, obviously, online. So, you know, you may get other capacitors with it, but generally, uh, with these kits, and actually specifically with this kit, all we have is, is the electrolytics. So, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and sit down and start marking off the capacitors I've got, make sure I've got everything I need in the kit. And then we will start working on getting some, uh, heating some stuff up and pulling stuff off and sticking it back on. We'll see you in a minute. All right, so I've gone through, uh, verified. I do indeed have all the capacitors in the kit that I expect to have. 
I thought maybe I'd just do a quick quick little uh, example of how to, to read capacitors. It's actually quite simple, but there are a couple things to keep in mind. So it's marked here with a 160 volt, 100 microfarad. So again, that's a UF, that sort of a backwards U. No, it's more like a U with an extra little tail on it. Anyway, again, that's, that's, that's micro, and then the F for farad. So 160 volt, 100 microfarad. So if we look down here, this is that for position C707, we have a 100. Here it's marked U on the worksheet, but of course we know better. So 100 microfarad, 160 volt. So you look here and it just says, it's literally just has it printed on the side. And all the capacitors, at least in this kit, were marked uh, very clearly and uh, there, were no, there were no issues with that. So the other thing to, to understand about electrolytic capacitors is that they have a polarity and you need to install these things correctly. So if you can see here, hopefully against the white, white piece of paper, we've got one long leg and one kind of short leg. And in addition to that, we also have this stripe down the side of the capacitor. So you can see there, it's got a little silver white stripe there down the side. And that's actually a little minus sign to let you know that that's the negative. Another indicator that's generally true is that the negative is usually a, the shorter leg of the capacitor. So you can usually find figure out uh, based on that. Now, sometimes the stripe will be marked as the positive, and so you'll need to be aware of that. So you do want to double check as you're installing these things that you are installing them with the correct polarity. If you don't install them with the correct polarity, uh, bad things will happen. I mean, generally, uh, you're, you're probably looking at, you know, it's like a, basically a little firecracker here. The thing's gonna, gonna probably pop and, and, and explode. And they can sometimes do that fairly dramatically. So uh, make sure to double check the capacitors yourself uh, as you're going through and marking them off if you have them and or when you're installing them uh, to make sure that you're marking with the correct polarity or installing them with a, uh, in the correct position with the correct polarity. On the boards, what I like to do when I'm, when I'm looking at removing a particular part is that I'll do the same thing. So I will look at the board at a part and, and hopefully this, this will turn out. So you can see this, this uh, giant cap right here, this also has a white stripe down the side and it's also marked negative. And it might be tricky to see on the board, maybe I'll, I'll show you when, when I actually pull something out. but. At the base of that, there's sort of a little dot section, kind of like little little on the printed on the PCB. Um, so it's silk screen on the PCB. There's a little sort of dot or mark, and that's the negative side. So sometimes uh, PCBs can be silk silk screen incorrectly, but you can generally well uh, <laughs> you can safely trust the part and how the part is installed. Now it's assuming you know that wasn't installed improperly in the first place. So if you've got a dead monitor, then that might be a concern. But generally, you know, the, the check the stripe, check the marking, and check the silk screen on the board and, and verify that the that the markings, um, they line up with the expect you know, your expectations of how the polarity should be set up in these things. So yeah, double check that. So what we're going to do to start here is let's go ahead and uh, replace a capacitor. So let me find a couple here that maybe uh, are going to be in places where we'll be able to see them uh, on camera a little bit easier. And then I will uh, come right back. All right. So conveniently enough, this one right here in the corner, and you won't necessarily be replacing all the capacitors on the board. So it's probably not a hot idea just to go through and just remove everything. So conveniently enough though, this one right here in this corner, which is marked C406, which might show up there but it's silk screened right there, it says C406. So that is a 25 volt, 330 microfarad capacitor. I can verify that the, the negative side is, whoa, I'm sorry. The negative side, silk screen on the board, is uh, towards the top here, which is what lines up with the stripe, so that's good news. And then we look at the underside of that and locate C406, which is gonna be right here in this corner. And we see that the negative side is also pointed up, which jives with what we see on the front side of the on the front side of the board. So up being this way. So that looks great. So we can safely remove that capacitor and reinstall a or and install a new one. 
feeling confident that the we will we'll get the polarity correct and the the board is marked negative on the top and positive on the bottom so that's great so removing a cap desoldering so the first step is not unfortunately the the gun yet what we're going to do is going to go in and we're just going to add a little dab just a tiny little dab of fresh solder so you know make sure double check make sure your tip is nice and clean all right so what you want to do is go straight to the base of the component you're removing and heat that up just a little bit and dab a little bit of fresh solder on it just a drop doesn't need much and this new solder will help the old solder come out just a wee bit easier so now is the exciting part so c406 here we pull out the Heiko 808 and again the tip is all nice and hot here and all you do is I just run it down the leg of the component that I'm getting rid of. This is going to heat up that little pool of solder at the bottom. And as soon as I see it go molten, I'm going to tap the vacuum. And that's going to suck that solder right back up and get the, get the heat off of the board. You know, so these parts are designed for heat, but you want to move quickly. So having them, you know, working with them, you know, you're going to have to heat them up. So they're, that's, again, what they're designed for. But... Get in there, get out, and, and tools and techniques which help you move quicker is gonna you know, help, your, help your components last longer and it's generally just better for everything. So, getting in here, that went molten almost immediately because we, the solder was all nice and, and fresh and just sucked it right back. And we don't even need to stop, we just go on to the next one, slide it down the leg, and suck it right out. That is it. Now, sometimes you may have to go back in and, and knock a, a little tiny bit more solder off occasionally, but generally, that is about all it takes. So now, the part's loose. I can feel it, and there's probably, again, just a, a wee bit more, a wee bit of solder left on the side of the leg. So you can just come back in and just heat that up just a wee bit more, and it'll pop right out. So that is it. Take that, throw it into your out, out bucket. And so here's our, our new part for that, that position. Again, we've got a 25, uh, 25 volt, 30, 330 microfarad capacitor for this one. Checking the polarity once again. You do not want to make a mistake on this. Now, uh, hopefully, yeah, you can see, you should be able to see it now. So on the board here, you see that that little white dot on the left hand side here that dot uh, indicates that that side is negative so you should be able to trust that so again stripe goes into that negative side slide the component the new component in turn your board back over and you know what you can do is if, if you're going to bend the leg, so that one of the problems can be is that when, when you get a component in here, sometimes it's hard to keep it in place while you're working. So a lot of people will, will bend the legs, and, and that's, that's okay. Uh, it makes the components uh, a little bit more difficult to remove later on if you have to, because the, the legs are spread, and so they'll be, you know, solder can, can stay kind of stuck underneath them. And you kind of have to bend them back into, you know, the straight legs to be able to get them out of the board. But if you do bend them, um, Buddy of mine told me a, a good good piece of advice here. Bend them along the trace. So rather than just randomly bending them out or away from you know each other or anything like that, if you bend them along the trace, you've got a much lower risk of bridging another trace or another solder pad. And you definitely don't want to do that. So so if you bend it along the trace, it's 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 going to stay. Uh, it, the the solder will flow and and tip towards uh, the, the the trace, which is where you really want it. Get your solder ready and your iron make sure again uh make sure the tip is nice and clean we don't want to introduce anything bad to you know built up stuff on the tip to the new fresh solder and just put just a drop of new solder on it and you want to go in and heat it up right at the base of the component right on the pad and the leg so that's what you want to heat up and the solder will flow towards the heat 
so it'll naturally kind of want to pool. So what you'll do is kind of get it in there, heat up the part, and again, try and move uh, as reasonably quickly as you can. And you heat up the part. As soon as uh, you get a little bit warm, you can start feeding some solder in. And you want to just do kind of a, you can see the on the board here about how much solder you want to use. And feed a little bit of solder in and leave and then remove the solder, uh, the, the, the solder wire from the tip and leave the iron on the base just a little bit and you'll see it just sort of collect right along the pad here, the little metal pad that the, the component slid through. And it'll pool up kind of perfectly right there and then generally uh, just sort of slide the tip of the iron up the leg of the component. And that'll kind of help the solder, again, as it flows towards the heat, that'll help the solder sort of attach to the leg real nice and smooth. So again, in there, heat up the component, add a little bit of fresh solder, heat it on there for just a second, and then straight up the tip. When you're done, you should have a nice, clean, shiny solder joint. You want to look for any pitting, uh, discoloration, that sort of thing. But if you like, you've got a, a, a good amount of solder, and I'm actually going to drop just a wee bit more on here. I keep saying wee today, I don't know. It's not usually a major part of my vocabulary. A little bit more solder on here. Just feel a little bit better about that. And uh, then you're done. Move on to the next part. So on uh, the next piece, same story. Get in there, heat up the base, add some solder, and move it up. Very, very simple. Once you're done, give your work a little inspection and get ready to move on to the next part. Before we do that, go back to your worksheet. That one happened to be, I believe it was C406. Yes, indeed. So C406, make sure to mark that off on your worksheet. So just use the highlighter and mark off that just that one position. And start looking for your next one. Let me, uh, let me see if I can find the next one here and I'll jump on right back. Maybe we'll just do that one more together and then uh, you're not gonna wanna sit through watching me do all of this flipping the board back and forth. So, but that's basically the technique. And uh, yeah, like I said, let me grab the next one and we'll see how that goes. Well, conveniently enough, we've actually got one right here on the neck board. So that's, that should be easy to kind of like flip flop back and forth here. So this is position C804, which is this guy right here. So that's C804. And that one is a 250 volt 22 microfarad. And we have a 250 volt, 22 microfarad capacitor right here. So perfect. Uh, again, same technique. We will go in, just add a tiny drop of fresh solder on here. Once we're done with that, get out our mighty Heiko 808, straight down the leg. As soon as that gets molten, give it a suck. I love how fast that thing is. No fuss, no muss. The negative side is uh, pointed up. It is marked correctly on the solder side as well as the part side. So we can feel confident that our polarity will be correct when we install the new capacitor. Hmm. That was a bit ucky under there. That may have been one of, one of the reasons why this monitor wasn't working. All right, so new one, check your polarity. Yes, indeed, it is the stripe on negative. Stripe goes up towards the mark. Now this one, you know, the the legs are actually a little bit narrow. They're narrower. The capacitor is actually a, a little bit smaller than the one that's outgoing. So here's a good idea to, to rather than just sort of jamming it in there, you know, I like to just 
get a pair of needle nose pliers and try and position the legs roughly at the correct width. That feels much better. All right, so again, marking the polarity, polarity negative is up. Slide the new component in. <clears throat> Bend it if you have to. Again, following the trace, if at all possible. Grab your iron, make sure your tip is clean. Add just a drop of new solder to it. Heat up the pad and the base of the component you're putting on there. Add some solder, let it heat up, and then follow the trail up. Not really follow the trail, I guess follow the leg up. And for the other one, get in there, heat the base up. And a little bit of solder, give it a second, and then just slide that tip right up the leg. Mm. Inspect your work. Make sure your joints look nice and shiny. Make sure there's no pitting. No funky discoloration. Component looks good. That is it. That is that is the quite simple art of installing a capacitor. So, again, I'm going to get back to just uh, installing the rest of these caps on this board. I'm not going to include you. If, if I run across anything interesting, I'll fire the camera back up and show you what I, uh, what I run into. But aside from that, it's really just this is the same process over and over and over again. Run through the list. Don't forget to mark when you do something. So that was number two. That was position C804. So we can go ahead and highlight that one as being complete. But that's it. So I will see you. For you, it will be a matter of moments. For me, it'll be probably about a half an hour or so getting the rest of this stuff done. All right. One more thing before I get going on removing and replacing all these caps. To make my life a little easier, just to remove one more thing that I'm going to be doing anyway from this board, just to make turning it over and working with it since I've got these, you know, the, the neck board here and this, the, the adjustment board. To remove one more thing to kind of help, uh, help rotating it around and working on it. I'm actually going to go ahead and remove the flyback. So I thought maybe I'd film that for you since we, we are going to be replacing that. So flyback is, you know, this guy right here, which is what that has wires that connect up to the neck board. Two wires, these two guys go up to the neck board here. And then the the anode, uh, which go, then goes into the back of the tube. So this guy, this whole black piece here, needs to be removed. And that's kind of the same story. So we're just going to be desoldering it from the board and then desoldering it from the, the two connections to the neck board. So it's really the same story here. I'm going to quickly go through and add some fresh solder to each of these points. And they're marked here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. This uh, little circle here, this little semicircle. And so I'm just going to run through real quick. Heat this, these, uh, each of these points up here. And add just a dab of fresh solder to each one. Now these things have a lot more solder on them, so it will take just a little bit more heat to get them to go molten. And actually, I found that with a Heiko, you almost don't need it, at least with the last, was it last, uh, just it's the one of the flybacks I've done so far. I didn't really need to do this so much. It, it went molten pretty quick for me. It's still not a bad practice.
All right, so just a dab of fresh solder and all those points. And now, bring in the big gun here. Again, same story, so just uh, put it down the, the leg there, give it a little suck. As soon as it goes molten, just hit that vacuum and... Fast. So fast. All right, so the flyback also has these little tabs that go through the board, and they're actually, well, this one, they're kind of broken off a bit. Um, but you can see already, like, the flyback is already pretty much loose. There's one here that I think has just a little bit more solder that needs to come off. And that's it. All the joints are free, so then you just give this little plastic tab over here a little push, and that's it. It's out. So then, on the neck board, sorry, I'm having to work with a camera so close to the stuff. It's just, the GoPro doesn't handle shooting macro shots super well, so I'm, I'm really hoping this is gonna gonna turn out okay. Um, the neck board, sorry, you know, actually already had removed. There's a little cover that goes on here. Let's see if I can find that. And I actually already removed it when I was cleaning everything. But there's a little cover here where this the, the white wire is going in. And that the white wire is attached to this point right there. And so you use a little flathead screwdriver to get underneath these tabs on either side. And then this just slides straight back off and then you can get at the part underneath. I opted on this one uh, to just go ahead and, and clip it off. I'm gonna have to cut, well, no, I'm not gonna have to. This is going away, Never mind. Uh, so I just need to remove the solder that's on here and then the other wire, this red wire here, same story, just remove the solder from that. So let's see if the Heiko can handle doing that without adding any fresh solder, how quickly it can. It's kind of bent awful close to this next joint though. So that's an example where, you know, you could, well, it's the same pads or the same, um, same trace, so it's not gonna cause any problems. But you could see that, you know, if you bend these things poorly, you could pretty easily, you know, um, join these two things together where maybe you didn't intend to. Uh, it, in this case, again, it doesn't matter, but that's just what I was saying about the... Bam! Sorry, saying about... It's just very exciting having having the right tool for the job. It just works so darn well. And again, that was without adding any additional solder to it. So, then we just need to clean off the connection here that goes to the um, to the neck of the actual tube and we've got a little bit of solder here Oops. and it looks like the the actual wire they, they kind of wrapped it around this thing and definitely make that clear enough so you can get the uh, the new wire once you strip that back so you can feed it back through that hole all right, so with the flyback removed now, we can set that aside now. This monitor was marked as not working, so this flyback may very well be the reason why it's not working. Um, and actually this tab is broken on it too. So I'm not really gonna trust this thing. Uh, for some of these things, I am gonna hold on to them because, you know, if these original flybacks are working, then I'd like to at least keep them on the shelf to, to have in, in case of of uh, emergency, but I think this one's probably toast. It's not cracked or anything that I'm seeing anywhere, but even still. Anyway, uh, so that's it. So that's removing the flyback. Well, I, I will uh, shoot uh, 
shoot the, the the job of reinstalling but again now there's a lot less weight on the on the board here as I'm turning it around and uh, one less thing in the way so it's you know this this big honking thing over there so anyway uh, back to removing and replacing capacitors on this board we'll see you when I'm done probably all right so I'm actually just about done here I've gone down to just the last capacitor and here's another great reason why these worksheets are great um, so this uh, we've got a mark here uh, C705 with an asterisk next to it and uh, it says here on this sheet from Bob Roberts uh, C705 is marked correctly on the parts side of the PCB which is the you know the top side here with all the, the parts hanging out but is incorrectly marked as C405 on the solder side that is really helpful information so this cap that we're talking about, it's actually nestled right in here between the big guys. And sure enough, on the top, it is definitely marked C705. When we turn that over, it's right here. And sure enough, it is marked C405. So, I mean, that's another great reason, you know, these worksheets, when they, you know, they're included. Uh, you know, so you can definitely go buy these capacitors, uh, you know, at Mouser or, you know, DigiKey, like other places online. But, you know, you're not going to get that kind of uh, little tidbit of information. So another, another maybe, uh, another little tip here is, if you do decide to go get caps from some place that doesn't provide worksheets, you know, copy these. So when, when uh, you know, throw them in the photocopier, take a picture of them, whatever it takes, but, um, you know, make a copy of these things, and that way... You've got a master, you know, hanging around that you'll always have to remind you of these little things. So I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, since I've got you here, so I'll just go ahead and pull this guy out. So it's that C405, which is, you know, incorrectly marked. It's C705. So I've been finding with the Heiko here that I really don't need to add uh, any fresh solder. These, these things have been uh melting great if you get to a stubborn joint you might want to uh throw a little bit of solder on there that just helps disperse the heat a bit better a lot of these legs too were bent like crazy um and i'm assuming this is from the factory this looks like the other one i have already rebuilt but they they bent the crap out of these legs when they were putting them in all right, so last cap here, C705 outgoing in there. Double check the polarity. Make sure you put it in the right way. Dang it. I have to use the needle nose to put this one back in, too. All right, negative is up. That one's home. Really have been trying to keep these things soldered as vertically as possible. You know, it just makes it so much easier to work with them. You know, obviously holding them in place is important, but they're just, they go in so much cleaner and the, the, the joints look so much nicer when they're, when they're vertical. Anyway, uh, yeah, make sure your tip is nice and clean. Add just a driplet of fresh solder. Jump in here, nail the pad. Now it's wanting to jump around. Use. So you can kind of wedge a tool in. You bend a leg back down, kind of flat against the board. And sometimes Get these guys to stand up nice and straight. I need another hand. <laughs> you notice, I, and it's kind of fiddly here, especially towards the end. Um, I've left all the legs intact, 
So all of our our long legs are are hanging out there. No tall jokes. But uh, yeah, so all the the long legs are are hanging out here, which um, I always leave that for last. It does make it kind of a pain for you know stuff like this. From just just dang it, hold that dang thing down just a little bit. Come on. Um, the reason for that is is that I kind of kind of generally move somewhat quickly through actually adding the parts on the board aside from when I run into goofy problems like this. Um, and you know while I am double checking my work as I work, I do a final check at the end and you know occasionally, you know, especially if you're just kind of in a rhythm and just doing this stuff, uh, you know, I'll get one backwards. I mean, you know, install a, a cap in um, with the polarity backwards. And so I always do a double check at the end to make sure that good, nice, shiny. Uh, double check to make sure that uh, all the all the polarity on the caps is correct. And um, if I screw up, then I've got the full leg to work with. You know, if you clip these things off as you go, unless you're like 100% sure that you've gotten everything exactly perfectly, you know, right, which you should be checking, uh, you know, you, it's, it's a lot harder to work with uh, a component which you've already chopped the leg off of. All right, so all I'm gonna do now is grab a Sharpie. I guess it's going to be kind of purple this time. And all I'm going to do is run through the board left to right, top to bottom, and just verify the polarity. On these ones, I didn't have any caps that uh, had a, a stripe on the positive side. They were all po stripes on the negative side. So I'm just going to double check and make sure. And then as I check them, I'm just going to, to draw a little, little purple dot on it. This one actually was marked red. I did not replace this one, so the factory must have done that. But, um, you know, for the sake of fun, it is checked. And all I'm doing is comparing the stripe on the capacitor to the, the mark on the board. And double checking to make sure that the, the negative side is the negative side. Only takes a minute and could save you a lot of headache from having to redo work later. Or having the crap scared out of you by blowing up a capacitor in something you just finished rebuilding. Amusingly enough, that's that uh, that's my text message sound that just went off. My phone's sitting right next to me. That's actually uh, our buddy Sam who helped us out with uh, with some sanding and some body work, and he's sending me a text message. And fortunately, I'm not very professional, and my phone is sitting right next to the right next to the camera. All right. So far, so good. So inevitably, if one of these actually goes, it's going to be the one that's not marked. <laughs> Neck board, yep, that one is correct. All right, so that looks like we're good I don't see anything backwards so all I'm gonna do now is go ahead and clip off the legs these guys so you just get yourself a you know a good sharp pair of side cutters and we'll just show you on the neck board here since that's an easy one to get to so when you cut these you do want to trim them off short but you don't want to cut the solder 
cut above the actual little solder joint there. So and then it takes a little while to go through and clip all these things, but it's also kind of nice when you're doing it at the end and then you just sort of have them have the hand your hand on the trimmers and you just run through and double check everything. But yeah, so just you know, cut them short, you know, they need to be, you don't want to have them too long, especially if you've got, if you're repairing a chassis where um, there's a potential for the, the, the solder side of the board to ground out on the frame someplace. You definitely want to make sure that that's not happening. So the legs need to be short, but not, uh, not too short, not into the solder. So I'm not going to record all this because this really is the extent of trimming legs. Um, but you get the idea. So uh, I'll be back in just a minute and we'll uh, we'll see about maybe tossing that fly back on. So I did go back and clean up the pads on the fly back a little bit. Just really uh, with, the, with the 808 went back in and, and cleaned up some of the, the solder that was still hanging out there. And then just some um, isoprofenol. Uh, alcohol just uh, kind of wiped it down here and made it nice and nice and clean so that's a good good clean dry surface for us so here is our new flyback and they usually come with a little protective bit of styrofoam over the legs here now these things can be a little bit fiddly to install uh, the legs get kind of out of whack you know a lot of you know sometimes you, you get them in like the <laughs> the leg protector will be just kind of hanging off the side that's lame uh, so this is they, they can be a bit fiddly so it's probably gonna take me a few minutes to kind of work this into into the board just so you're aware so I'll probably speed this part up a little bit Probably will involve straightening out some of these legs too because I can see already that they're They are not the straight as As I need them to be and when you're trying to to get this many pins through at the same time Straightness really helps a lot So Helps to make sure they're perfectly up and down and actually they're they're probably will not match the board exactly perfectly dead center on those things either so get them straight as you can to start with and then you'll figure out what kind of slight fiddling you might need to do to them when you start I mean when you start lining it up on the board sorry <laughs> This is really all about finesse too, not force. There's definitely no or very limited force you want to be applying to this thing. Make sure that plastic tab that goes through the board that that's lined up as well. Oh god, that plastic tab is really far off. It's probably a good two millimeters off. <clears throat> Custom flyback. All right, that should do it. All right, take three or four, whichever one this is. That's got it. Yeah, she's when I uh, finish bending all the pins, trimmed out that little piece of the clip. It just flew right in. All right, so get this thing attached to the board first make sure it is well and truly seated there then it's not so different from soldering the, uh, the capacitors we've been doing but we do need to lay down a bit more solder just because these are bigger connections and the actual pins are quite a bit thicker than the capacitors but it's the same story so 
to start with just a little, little dab of solder on your tip make sure it's nice and clean and come in heat the component in the pad you got plenty of coverage on the hole and we'll leave <clears throat> parts of the hole exposed Take a look at your work. Make sure. I'm probably gonna add just a wee bit more. So, Jesus. I'm probably gonna add just a little bit more solder to a couple of these joints, but basically, that's that's it. Got the two connections to the neck board to make, and once that's done, we are done with this chassis. All right, so first things first, uh, we need to tin these wires. We are going to be soldering here. So nice pair of helping hands is always kind of nice on tinning wires when they're attached to something that's that you can't really control, like it's just sitting down here. So tinning just. Uh, same old technique, make sure your tip is nice and clean. Add a dab of solder. And come in, and all you want to do is basically just put solder all over the tip of this wire here so it's nice and shiny. Then do the same thing for this guy. So it's got a good connection to solder there. For this one, I'm actually making sure that it's got a little extra since that's that larger connection we need to make. So then get rid of the helping hand. A little clamp. Uh, then the wire from the bottom of the flyback needs to run through this top corner, which is K806. So we take that, we can run that straight through. And then we just need to add a little, little bit of heat and a little bit of solder. Tip is clean. Just heat that up. It's already got some solder on the wire, so we just need to a little bit of heat. Drop that on there. Make a nice connection for that guy. And then the other one is the tab inside of the part that connects to the neck bore, or the, sorry, to the actual neck of the monitor. And it's this little connection in there. Let me actually grab, maybe these, this little clamp will make this a little bit easier for you to follow while I do it. Not really hardly hardly any pressure on the the PCB here, just enough to hold it. Just enough to drop it. The same story here, so the, the wire is already tinned. So it's got a little glob of solder on it. In fact the old one did as well. We shouldn't even really need to add any additional solder to this. We should be able to just take it, add a little bit of heat. And once that goes nice and molten, remove the heat, 
and that's good. I'm going to add just a little bit more. Make sure that's a good solid connection. Give a little tug. That is one piece now. And with that done, we can grab our little cover for this guy. It's got a notch on the top to allow the wire through. So you should be able to just slide that right back in there. So that covers that quite nicely. And let go of that and that neck board is ready to go. The new flyback is installed so that connection obviously goes up to the monitor and the neck board goes on back there so that is rebuilding a sharp xm 1801 monitor which you'll find in nintendo red tent dual versus system so reverse uh or uh, sorry uh reinstalling this thing into the chassis really is the reverse of what i did to take it apart there's not really anything in the way of tricks uh, to doing it, but um, back through the same steps, really. Um, but I, I have been working, and I've got a finished one, which I thought I would show you. So... This guy is nice and clean, brand new flyback, all the wires run the way they were from the factory, new caps, and clean. This thing is just beautiful and ready to be reinstalled. Things in great shape. So I'll have one more video about monitors because this thing is going to need some adjustments before it's ready to go. I can't just throw this thing as is. Or it's very unlikely though that I will be able to throw this thing as it is uh, with a brand new flyback and, and all that work done to it uh, without needing some adjustments. So I've got a tool uh, from a local buddy of mine. Um, and we'll talk about that in, a, in the next video probably. Get these things, uh, all the rest of these monitors wrapped up and cleaned up and ready to go. And um, yeah, perhaps perhaps the next video we'll be talking about this tool for testing monitors. You may have heard about it. It's a thread on Clav about it. It's a Crafty Mex Test Pattern Generator or TPG. So yeah, we'll be using his TPG to dial these things in. Uh, until then, I've got. Uh, one, two, three, four, oh, five more of these things to do. Uh, at least four. I have four because uh, I actually have an extra monitor. And I only need, uh, I only need six for the three red tents that I'm building. Anyway, uh, so I've got an extra monitor. I, I may or may not actually rebuild that thing before I look at selling it or putting it on the shelf and using it as a backup. I don't know. I haven't decided about that yet. Anyway, a uh, bunch more of these things to do is the point, and once I'm done with that, then we'll be back for more. You know, actually, the next video might be paint. You know, we've been talking to, we may have sorted that stuff out, so we'll see. If, that, if that's the case, then maybe paint. If not, then it will be the test pattern generator. Anyway, uh, thanks again for watching. Um, hopefully you guys are getting something out of it i'm having a i'm having a good time shooting them and uh an amusing enough time editing and, and posting them up so yeah if you if you have any questions please feel free love questions uh, either in the clav thread or, or on on uh on youtube so feel free to post some questions and chat about stuff we'll, we'll just keep going and uh we'll see you next time thanks guys cheers Thank you.